One thing we hear a lot from folks is that they're interested in working with radar data. Over the next few videos, we're going to learn how to access, download, plot, and animate radar data to make something like this annotated four panel animation that you see here. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're actually going to be talking about Siphon. So Siphon is the library that Unidata develops to help pull data down from Threads data servers and other, uh, we call them simple web services. So we want to help you get data off the internet and into a Python environment so that you can use MetPy and other tools to analyze and plot it and do your research. So this week, we're going to talk about how to get radar data using the Siphon Radar Server, which is a little bit of a, a mystery. There's not a lot of folks that I've seen using this, and it's a really handy tool. So to start off with, we're going to import the Threads Data Server catalog, and then we're going to import the Radar Server object as well. So from siphon.catalog, import... TDS catalog, and then from siphon.radar server, import radar server. So the first thing we need to do is get a threads catalog object that's looking at the main radar server catalog. So for that, we're going to use our traditional cat equals TDS catalog. And then here we're going to point it to the main thread server. So threads.ucar.edu slash threads slash radar server. So this is not something that's just linked to on the website. Slash catalog.xml as we normally would have. Then what we can do is go ahead and print out a list of the catalog references, so catalog refs. And you see that we've got level two data and level three data for NextRad. There's a case study, and then there's also the data from the IDD, which is going to be the real-time data feed. And then there's some TDWR data in there as well. So we can actually get the web address that we need to point siphon to for any of these using the href attribute, so for a hyperlink reference, much like you would see in HTML. So cat.catalogrefs, remember tab completion is your friend when you're typing some of these uh, longer names here. And then nextrad, we're going to go with nextrad level three radar from IDD. And then .href. So that shows us the link to where we're going to need to point to do our query for getting data from a certain station or a certain product over a time range. So now we're going to go ahead and instantiate a radar server object here. And we're just going to point it to this URL. So instead of putting the URL in, let's go ahead and do this in a programmatic way. We can just copy and paste that so we don't have to retype it again. And then we're almost ready to make our query. We know that we're going to use time in our query. So we're going to use the date time module. So to get us started from date time, going to import date time and time delta. Now we're ready to set up our query. Create a query object, rs.query. I'm going to define a variable for now. So datetime.utc now will give me the current UTC time at the time of evaluation. And then we're going to tell it which station we would like. So query.stations. You can request multiple stations in here if you so choose. I'm going to do FTG, KFTG. Then we can string as many of these together as we want, these different uh, station, 
time range, variables, and so on, the different query attributes we might want to use. So time range. I'm going to say now minus time delta hours equal one. So that'll give me one hour before now to now. And then which variables do I want? Now, I don't know all of the product codes for the radar off the top of my head, but there's a place we can go find them. If you go to this web page from NCEI, it's got all of the Nextrad products. And for example, we're going to be looking at digital base reflectivity. So these are the different tilts. And these are actual reflectivity values, not the, the more raw data. So N0Q will be the lowest tilt of that. Uh, we could also go down here and look at something like correlation coefficient, so N0C, and maybe oh, hydrometeor classification. How about that? So N0H. These are a nice little table here to go and look up which ones of these that you might want to use. So for our case, let's just get N0Q. So if we evaluate this cell, it's going to show the query string that it's created. So we've got a station, variable, time start, and time end. Now we're going to go ahead and make the query, and it is going to return a catalog object to us. I'm going to call it the query catalog it is radar server dot get catalog. Then we give it our query. So it's already returned. So now let's look at what we got back. So query cat dot datasets will show us the datasets. Now this is not necessarily the most straightforward way to see this. We've got some duplicated naming here and it's not sorted. So I would look at it as sorted list of the datasets. Now we see a nice time sorted list here. Now you can also request multiple variables at once if you would like. Remember I said we could request multiple stations or multiple variables. So if I copy my query from up here, and now I can request N0Q and maybe N0C in here, then we're gonna go ahead, get the catalog from the radar server, and then we'll print the sorted list again. So now you see we've got N0C and N0Q products. I could also query multiple radars if I wanted and get multiple radars, multiple products back. And you might find this, you know, this one catalog that's got all of that in there might be exactly what you're looking for. You also might want to break it up into, I want this catalog that's got reflectivity. I want this catalog that's got correlation coefficient or maybe a catalog for each radar. Uh, there are a few ways that you could do this. The first one is you could make a list of catalogs. So for example, let's say that I want product codes N0Q, N0C, and N0H, so hydrometeor classification. I'm going to make an empty list for my query catalogs. Then I'm going to say for product code and product codes. So writing a little for loop here. I'm going to go ahead and copy our query string, save myself a little bit of typing here. But we want to replace this with product code. Then we want to actually get the catalog. So we'll paste that in here. And then query catalogs dot append query cat. So now what we've done is each time this for loop executes, we have product code is in zero Q. The next time product code is in zero C. The next time it's in zero H. So it executes this query on that product code, gets a catalog, 
And now query catalogs is a list. They're all NextRad level three radar, but each of those lists is actually a, a catalog of each of the reflectivity, cross-correlation, and hydrometeor classification. That would be one way to do it. Uh, a way that I think I might prefer to do this a little bit more, so I'm going to copy our block of code again here, is instead I'm going to make the query catalogs, instead of a list, a dictionary. So I'm going to create an empty dictionary here. And then instead of appending, so query catalogs, my dictionary key is going to be the product code equals the query catalog, like this. So now if I look at query catalogs, it's a dictionary where the key is whichever product I got, and then the value is that catalog. So now, for example, if I wanted to get at the data sets for correlation coefficient in here, I'm going to look at them sorted query catalogs, then my key, so n0c dot datasets. And there is a sorted list of all of the correlation coefficient datasets. So that's also a nice way to break it up. Really depends on what your application is and what you're trying to accomplish, which one of these might be the best way for you. But I hope that you found this useful, learning how to use the radar server in Siphon to go make these queries and get data. You can get lat long queries. There's lots of extra functionality there that's really great to explore. So what we're going to do next week is look at how can we plot these data and loop through to make multiple plots. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Unidata channel on YouTube so you're alerted when more videos like this come out. Follow us on Twitter. We're at MetPy and at Unidata. And be sure to go like the Unidata Facebook page. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next MetPy Monday.